Okay, so in this video, I just want to touch base on um, additional revenue streams. You know, once we start scaling, we've got to start looking for multiple streams of income. The great thing about property is you can use the same fundamentals and just push them out into different revenue streams. So to give you an idea, if you're currently running serviced accommodation for yourself, you should start be looking to scale into serviced accommodation management. Great strategy. It's risk-free. You charge a percentage of the booking value. It plugs into the operation exactly how you run your own and it works really, really well. And since we have started doing this, we have, you know, no doubt the cash flow has increased. We've got better because we've had more to deal with. So we've had to put better systems and processes in place for our own stuff, but it's just a great additional revenue stream. So I would say once you've got past probably five, maybe 10 SA units, then you start looking at offering an SA management service and you start, you know, putting your marketing out there and you start, you know, putting the feelers out there around your location and telling everybody that you do that and become the go-to guy. Um, you know, we pick up anywhere from five to 10 properties a month, probably on our SA management. And, you know, it's continuing to get busier and busier and busier because we do a great job for people who get referred. People know that we do it in the location. So that's one additional revenue stream that you can pull from just your own SA operation. The next thing that you might want to do is take it another layer deep. So we have our own linen service and we have our own cleaning team. So we, within the Northeast, can therefore rent that out. Now, I discovered that that was a big problem for people. So I have put a package together where we will... Um, do the linen and cleaning for people. They still do all the management. We plug it in to at the minute properly. And, you know, we just plug their properties in using iCal links and we then do the service and cleans for that. And we bill them per hour for the cleaners. Obviously I make a margin on the cleaners and I make a margin on the linen, not a huge amounts of revenue from it, but it's good to keep your cleaners busy. It means you can have your own team of cleaners and not have to be outsourcing. So you actually save money on your properties and you know, you do make money, so it is an additional revenue stream. And what tends to happen is eventually they just say, will you do the full management? Because we don't get involved in maintenance. We don't get involved in guest issues, all that sort of stuff. So we just turn up. But eventually they'll be saying, can you fix this? And we say, well, no, because that's not in the contract. But if you do want us to do that, we could do the full management service. And eventually they sort of come over to that. So again, it's kind of like that lower ticket item. And then you're moving them into your, your, your higher ticket management item and the total hands-free off solution. So some people don't, some people just stick with it, but regardless, I'm not bothered. It's a good service for us and you know, it works very well. So that's how you can create sort of two extra revenue streams just from doing service accommodation. Obviously, as you scale them, you will always be looking at buy, refurbish, refinance. That is the, the sort of the golden ticket that we're looking for. So whether you started there or whether you've been building towards that, you should always be looking to do BRR as much as you can. Now, BRR is not a quick strategy. You know, if we acquire three to five deals a month, I'm really happy. You know, the target next year is going to be more than that. But, you know, even just finding, you know, I've got very little in the pipeline at the minute. So, so finding stuff is quite difficult and it can be a slow process. You know, we, uh, I've had a, a terrible, um, terrible HMO conversion going on. It's at least four weeks delayed, you know, so the cash flow from that I was expecting four or five weeks ago it should be tenanted by now. It's not, you know, so these things happen, but all in all, it's quite slick, but even being slick, it's like three months at best before you get your money back out from the minute you've paid it to your solicitor. So solicitor refer, refinance money back in your bank account to go again is about three to four months. And that's been very good at it. So if you're a bit slow or, you know, you maybe just t testing the water with your first view and you, you, it might take you about six months. So that is just a strategy that for me plugs in at the background is a core fundamental to the business because that's what adds the net wealth. That's what, you know, where the big money is long-term, where the ROI is long-term, but you know, you're not going to scale at a massive pace. You know, even if I had, you know, 20 million in cash in the bank now, right now finding the deals is quite tough. So I probably still couldn't deploy that 20 million pound and I couldn't, you know, get it all utilized. So without being daft and overpaying and, you know, breaking the rules, which isn't what we do. So we've got to stick to the fundamentals and you've got to work the market as it works. So, but, um, great strategy. You should be spending a lot of your time on those type of viewings and you should be focusing on building that element of your business. So that's kind of two, um, well, BRR 
and then we've got the essays and then we've got the two deeper levels of the essays, you know, so there's four revenue streams in it on its own. What I then look to do is add HMOs in and you can do this in the form of obviously BRR to HMO, which obviously creates a bigger margin because your mortgage is less than your rent or just, you know, rent to rent and um, great strategies, both of them. I love rent to rent on essays and HMOs because I can agree them today. We can have them up and running next week. I can have them cash flowing next week. So as long as you know what you're doing, you're slick, they work, you know, you're on top of your numbers and everything like that. Great strategy. So always be looking to move into HMOs or if you're currently in HMOs, be looking to move into service accommodation. They actually complement each other quite well. We've got a lot of big properties that sometimes like this current HMO that I've got on the moment with the refurb, I'm actually thinking I might SA that because the SA market in Gateshead for big properties has gone hot. There's a lot of development going on around sort of Team Valley and, and around the surrounding areas, the, 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 the roundabout down at Bolden, which is getting done. So at the minute, contractors are wanting big houses in that location. So for me, I might turn that into an SA, you know, and it gives you that flexibility because at the end of the day, you've got to furnish them quite similar. You know, you've got to run them quite similar. So it's, it, you can have that choice. And also if a HMO doesn't work, I can turn it into an SA, which I have done before. You know, I had a six bed HMO, it wasn't working because it didn't really have any lounge areas. So I split it into two, three bed flats, ran them as SA and they've been great. So, you know, it gives you that flexibility to understand different strategies and, you know, jump between the strategies. So BRR, HMO, rent to rent, HMO owned, service accommodation owned, service accommodation rent to rent, service accommodation management and linen and cleaning. So they're just, you know, there's five revenue streams. Um, we then have project management. So as you start doing BRR and you start doing your own projects, then you get good with, you know, your teams, your builders, and you can just manage other people's projects. Everybody's always looking for decorators. Everyone's always looking for this. Everyone's always looking for plumbers. So you can just manage it and then you can take it to a deeper level and run maintenance. So, you know, we I put our maintenance guy out there, uh, keep him busy, keep us busy. And, you know, it, it works well. It's just, again, another revenue stream, but it's also another good angle to get in with landlords. You know, they're coming to you with problems. You then start talking about their properties and then you start talking about maybe rent to rent or a fully managed service or a JV partnership. So again, they're all kind of the lower, the lower, the lower profit areas for me are lead generation tools. And then we then try and scale them into the, big, into the bigger ideas. So, um, and then finally, if you wanted to, I personally don't, but if you wanted to, you could add deal sourcing in there. So if you wanted to, you know, if you found you were out and about doing that much activity and you couldn't really handle it all yourself, you might want to source the deals on. I don't like doing that. I'm all in favor of keeping the money for myself. I'll always try and, you know, keep the cash flow into the business myself. I don't want to just sell it for a quick book. So um, that's not for me. I'm not saying you can't. The principles are exactly the same. You go out, you find a deal you package it up, you make it attractive to an investor and then they basically pay you for your time and you can either make it a full turnkey solution where you do absolutely everything for them or you just sell the deal on, put them in touch with um, whoever, the, the, the landlord or, or the estate agent, whoever it might be, and you take a fee for that. So uh, something that I don't do, but, um, but is, is done. And obviously you've got flips as well. Again, I am not that big of a fan of flips. I like to flip things on myself through BRR. So whilst I might not get as much money out, in terms of the extra 25% that I'll be leaving in each deal, I have got a cash flowing unit for as long as I want it to be cash flowing. And, um, you know, for me, that's more important than flipping the deal on and getting an extra 15 grand out at that time. So I'd rather have the cash flow coming in over the years, recycle the money and go again with another one. Um, if, for me, flipping is a nine to five job, a bit like deal sourcing. You've always got to be out there getting, waiting for that or trying to get that next one, trying to get that next sale. Whereas with the BRRs and the rent to rents, they're kind of, once they're plugged into the model, they're just cash flowing. Obviously they need management, but you know, they're just cash flowing and they're cash flow for as long as you want them to, to cash flow, as long as the operations are working. So, so there's just a bit of a flavor of where you should be heading. Um, so what I'd like you to do, I'd like you to list down where you're at now. And I'd like you to list down what additional services you're going to add into your business model over the next 30 days. And then I'd like you to um, write down how you feel you're going to execute on that plan. And I'd like you to drop into the group what additional services you're going to be adding into your business. And then uh, tag me in it. And I'd like to start flowing a bit of conversation in there. And obviously, if we need to jump on a call to talk about it further, then, you know, book a call. So hope that helps. Let's get after it. And uh, let's start really blowing the business up by getting diverse.